So today I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to make my wonderful cinnamon rolls. These are the best cinnamon rolls, um, I think, myself. I have given them to people and I have sold them for the past like four years. So I'm gonna show you my famous recipe. So don't go sell them a recipe, but you can make it for yourself since I'm not really baking for the public anymore due to the virus. So anyway, I have given you the list of ingredients. So I'm gonna just show you slowly, step by step, what it takes to make a cinnamon roll and you can do it. So you can do this at Christmas, Thanksgiving, or any time that you want a wonderful um, breakfast. So it's perfect for back to school. Um, right now we are all experiencing a different back to school. So the schedule of hurrying if you're going out is just something that's got us all a little bit crazy right now. So this will be perfect to have that the kids can just grab one out and eat before they go to school. So this is what we're gonna do first. The first step when making any kind of yeast is that you're gonna have a warm liquid. I use a cup of milk. Um, if I have been out of milk at any point in time, I have done a half of a cup of milk to a half cup of water. But you're, one again, you're going to want to warm this just enough to where it's not too, too hot. I have made so many of them that I know exactly how long to microwave it and I do mine for one minute and it's exactly perfect. So I'm gonna warm my milk and then we will add our yeast into our mixing bowl and it will need to proof. And what to proof your yeast means that you are just letting it kind of pop out of um, its little yeast capsule. I'm not a scientist, I don't know how it works, but that's what we're doing is we're proofing the yeast. So we're gonna heat our milk and then we're gonna add our yeast. So I'm gonna get my flour mixture ready while I'm warming my milk. And I add one teaspoon of salt to my plain flour. And I have tried different recipes, but I like to add a, just a tiny dash of nutmeg. Not much at all is going in there. If you have an allergy, obviously eliminate this. Um, but this is just something that gives it a little punch. Um, I've compared recipes and I will not reveal which cinnamon roll uses nutmeg, but it's a highly recommended one. So this is a key, you may not like it, but you probably don't know that it's in it when you're eating it. So you can add a dash of that. And if you want it to be a little bit richer, if you have vanilla pudding, you can add one tablespoon of vanilla pudding mix into your flour. We're not gonna do that today because I don't have any. So I'm gonna add my half a cup of sugar to my mixing bowl. Then I'm going to pour my warm milk in with that. And then I'm gonna dissolve the sugar into the milk and then get my yeast in. Now, I know that yeast is kinda of hard to come by right now, but thankfully I had bought up some of these jars before everything started getting hard to find. Just make sure that your yeast is in date. I do a tablespoon of yeast to my one cup of milk. That might be a little more than a pack. I think a pack is like two and a half teaspoons. But after I've added the yeast, I'm just gonna quickly stir it into my warm milk and then let it proof. So now I'm gonna get the other um, liquid ingredients ready. And it is a fourth of a cup of oil and one egg and a half of a cup of mashed potatoes. Now, I know you're probably thinking, what in the world? Why is she putting mashed potatoes in a cinnamon roll? Well, that's one of my secret ingredients. Trust me on it. If you don't have it and you make them and they don't turn out, well, you can't blame me. So try it, it's just instant mashed potatoes. So we're gonna put a half a cup of those into our oil along with our egg. And our yeast is proofing as we speak and it should be ready. And if you watch me, you can see that it is not exactly a half of a cup. Some of it's dripping out. Uh, it's enough to do. They're a little thicker than I wanted. All right, I'm just going to break my egg in here um, and just kind of mix the mashed potatoes and oil together. And it looks like our yeast is proofed. You can see how it poofs up a little bit and it makes a wonderful yeast smell. Um, if your yeast does not look like this at this time, then you either had your water too hot or your yeast was old. So I think that ours is ready. It is poofed up. So we're gonna now add our mashed potatoes, oil and egg, and then our flour. 
you will need a dough hook on your mixer. If you do not have a mixer like this and you only have a handheld, I will just give you a word of advice. You may have to just do this by hand or a spoon because a dough hook is really necessary in order to get the um, dough at the right consistency to make sure that all of your ingredients are mixed together. Whoops, might help if I plugged in my mixer. So now our dough has formed and you can see it's not too, too sticky, but it's not too hard. Um, I have made rolls before that they were just too dry because it was either the humidity was wrong for the day. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to pull this out of our mixing bowl and knead it on our cutting board with flour down there first. And it's always good to keep a little bit extra flour on that surface as you're doing it so it won't stick. So the dough is ready. As you can see, I've kneaded it to where it makes a nice ball that it doesn't stick to anything. I'm gonna dust off the flour, and then I'm going to place it down in a greased bowl and twist it, and then I'm gonna flip it over so the top part is a little greased. And I'm going to cover it. I like to cover mine with saran wrap, or cling wrap, whatever you wanna call it, plastic wrap. And I'm going to place it in my oven until it rises all the way up to the top. Now, I have a setting on my oven that says keep warm, and I have figured out that if I warm it just for two minutes exactly, it gets it to the right warmth to where it won't rise too fast, but you really have to be careful um, when rising it. You could leave it on your counter, but um, it's just best to keep it in a warm place and covered, but you wanna keep an eye on it because if it rises fast and it's ready, then you need to go ahead and make it um, with dough, with the yeast in it, it's very um, easy to just, it is easy to mess it up, but it's also easy to work with. So I know that kind of sounds funny, but anyway, so we're gonna put this in the oven to rise, and then at about another hour, we will be ready to roll our cinnamon rolls. and the dough has risen almost to the top in my bowl. You can see how it doubled in size. So we're gonna take this dough and we're gonna roll it out and I'm gonna show you how to do that. But this is the same type of dough that you can use if you wanna make a Danish of any kind with a fruit filling. You can take any kind of pie filling, strawberry, blueberry, or apple pie filling and put it in the middle and then roll it up the same exact way. It's a little messier, but it makes a delicious Danish that you can make. So this is the same dough for that, so you can still use this dough for anything, but we're gonna make cinnamon rolls out of it. All right. So I'm gonna put my dough on a floured surface. I have a nice large cutting board that I use, but you can use any type of surface. We're gonna roll it out there, and just, I like to make sure that I lift it under and make sure that the dough, um, flour is all underneath the dough because you don't want it to stick. So just keep your flour handy when you're doing this process just to make sure that um, all of it's covered. So now that I've got it into like a long little fat tube, I'm gonna take my nice rolling pin and I'm just gonna gently roll it out to where it's a larger um, rectangle type shape. There's many different ways to do this, but this is just what I found and what I like. Now, once I've got my dough rolled out, I'm gonna take my tablespoon of melted butter and my basting brush, and I'm going to gently paint the dough, as I call it, with butter. Um, those of you know, I teach art, and I look at this as an, an art form of food, food art, painting with butter. But we're gonna put butter all across the surface of our dough, 
and you will have extra left over, so you wanna keep that handy, because after you bake them, we'll baste it with butter on top. Now, now that I've finished basting it on top, I'm going to take my brown sugar and cinnamon. Um, I put it at the beginning. You want to go ahead and make two cups of brown sugar to maybe a tablespoon or two tablespoons with ground cinnamon. I keep it in my big container. So it, um, if you make two cups, you might have more than you need, but you can put it in a Ziploc bag. But anyway, that makes sure that you have enough to cover your surface. Now, if you don't care for cinnamon as much, you can cut back on that. It's just up to you. But just we're just gonna sprinkle it all over the surface and then spread it out. So it's time to roll it up. And I always start, I'm right-handed, so I start on the left side and I just pinch it as I go. I don't know if you can see, but you're just kind of pinching this first layer, um, this first little row down, and then it makes it easier for you to roll the whole thing up. And you can dust off any flour that is extra hanging on there if you'd like. Now I have my long tube of cinnamon roll that are about the length of my um, board. It depends on how thick your dough was, and I didn't tell you. I, I mean, it's probably like a half an inch thickness of dough when you roll it out. Um, and it can be thicker than that if you want a more of a, a dough based. But now we're gonna take our dental floss. And I know you're probably thinking, what in the world is she using dental floss for in the kitchen? Hopefully everybody has this in their house. I hope so. This is unflavored, just dental floss, white stuff. And let me cut off the end here and then I'll show you how to do it. But you just slide your dental floss underneath your um, tube and you see how I'm bringing it together and you just pull it and it cuts a perfect cinnamon roll. So I'm gonna put my end out of the way and I have over here a greased pan that I'm gonna cook these in and I'm gonna freeze them. So that's why they're in an aluminum pan. You can use a glass baking dish too, or any size. I usually use rounds, but this is all I had at the moment and we are in the season of using what we have. So I'm gonna cut these and then line them up in my pan. Depending on the size pan that you have, like I have this large one that has um, 36, 9, 12, 15, 15 in it. Um, that's just the pan that I had. Depending on what, um, how size big your pan is, you may have some extra dough left over. And this is what my kids love. I will have a little bit left over and I will throw it into just any pan that I have. This is the first one I grabbed, which is just a loaf pan. So I'm gonna throw the scraps, as we call them here at our house, into this pan. And as you notice, the ends tend to be little small rolls. They love those. So if you just have this, you can just throw them into a pan for the scraps and then you just have a few little extras to snack on or see how you like them. So I have all my rolls ready and I'm gonna preheat my oven to 345 degrees. My specific oven, this is the temperature that works best for me. Um, 350 and above, it tends to burn them without cooking in the center, and you, you, depending on how your oven is, you'll just have to play with it. So, I did that now, before I roll, I didn't do it before, because I want these to be able to rise for a few minutes. So, I'm gonna let these sit here for the time that my oven is preheating, and it should have risen a little bit by then. You can let these rise for 30 minutes, Sometimes I've left them for up to an hour, um, but if you're kind of pushed on time, that's okay. You can bake them and they will still turn out great. But we want these rolls to rise again, so we're gonna let them sit here for about 20, 
20 minutes and then we'll put them into the oven and bake them. So the cinnamon rolls have now doubled up a little bit, or I'll, I don't really want to say that they've doubled, but they have risen um, enough so that we can go ahead and put them in the oven. So I have my oven again at 345 degrees. So we're gonna pop those in so the oven. So we've went ahead and we've got them in the oven and we're just gonna put them in there for about 10 minutes. And look, I had to get my scraps in there. Put them in there for about 10 minutes and then we'll come back and check them. If you start to smell cinnamon rolls, then you know it's getting time that they're almost done. Now that's a good key for when anything you're baking to go and check it is if you can smell it baking. If you can smell it, then you need to check it. So we're gonna um, check on these in just a few minutes to see if they've started to brown. So I've started to smell these yummy cinnamon rolls and as you can see, they've been in there for probably more like 15 minutes and they are starting to brown around the edges. But the key is to just gently take your finger and tap it on that center spiral. And if it doesn't go in and cave in too much, then they are almost ready. These have just a few more minutes but they're getting there and they're starting to smell delicious. So I'm gonna base, baste these with the butter so that it just gives them a little extra buttery flavor and it makes them a little more moist. And as you can see, they are starting to turn brown on the tops. You don't wanna get it any darker than that because it will dry it out and it will be hard and chewy, but this is about the perfect um, look to the cinnamon rolls. So now they're gonna need to cool completely before we add our ice. So while our cinnamon rolls are, are cooling, we're gonna make um, what some people think is the best part about the cinnamon roll, the icing. And all you're gonna need is about two cups of powdered sugar and I use milk for my icing, and if you wanna add a dash of vanilla flavoring, you can. It just might change the color of it, and it'll be a more of a tan, or instead of a white. So we're just gonna add about two to three cups of powdered sugar into our bowl, and I always make a little well, as I call it, down in the center, and I drip about two tablespoons of milk into that. Now, with icing, or any time that you're using powdered sugar, it's important to just add a very small amount of your liquid to it. So I've got just those two tablespoons and you can see how it's already coming together. If you overdo the liquid, which is our milk in this case, it will be way too runny and then you have to end up using more powdered sugar and then you end up using a whole bag of powdered sugar and you have too much icing. So I probably am running my mouth and I probably put just way too much milk, but anyway. So it's just best to just be, be real careful when you're adding that because a little bit at a time and it will go a long way. So two tablespoons of milk and then I added probably two more tablespoons. So roughly about four tablespoons of milk to about two and a half to three cups of powdered sugar. That's just roughly. But you're gonna wanna stir this and depending on how thick that you do want it, it can be kind of hard, but you need to get all of those powdered sugar um, little bumps out. So just stir it till it's really, really smooth. And then whenever our cinnamon rolls have cooled completely, it'll be time to ice them. So all of the rolls are done and ready to be eaten. Are you gonna be the first one to try it? Yeah. How is it? Good. Good. good now if you haven't already done so make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you get some notifications every time we post a new video and what make sure you smash that like button because you know you like this video just like I like I like this cinnamon roll mm -hmm. <laughs>